Hey there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. Over the last 10 years, we've featured all sorts of amazing spaces on this channel, including a lot of tiny homes, but also homes that are made with alternative methods, such as shipping container homes, homes that have been upcycled, such as this amazing luxury airplane home, homes that are 100 feet up in the air, and also homes that float on water. And that's what brings me to today's episode. We're gonna meet Brandon and Sarah, and they're gonna take us on a tour of their second floating home and discuss their unique lifestyle of living full-time on the water. And yes, we featured Sarah and Brandon once before on this channel with their previous floating home, so if you'd like to see a tour of that, make sure you check out the link in the description. And if you're like me and you're addicted to unique home tours, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new video. Hi, I'm Brandon. I'm Sarah, and this is our new floating cabin that we call the Honey Hole. Tiny house now, giant journey, they come to fill my soul. Come on out and show them how I'm going to roll. We live here with our dog on Fontana Lake in Western North Carolina. We've lived here for a little over four years. This is the second floating house that we've lived on. We loved our last house so much that we decided that we were gonna have to do it bigger and better. Now we <laughs> only went 135 square feet bigger, but we went a whole lot better. The last house was one that we had fully renovated. Well, this one we actually had the opportunity to build from brand new. Working with a new build on floating cabins, you are held to a criteria. And this house, we were held to 360 square feet for the actual floating cabin part. And then the open docks, which surround the house, we were held to 400 square feet. So we technically ended up with 800 square feet of house and docks with this floating cabin. A lot of people wonder whether we build these on land and then float them or whether you build them in the water. It was a little bit of a combination of both. So we built the foundation, if you will, the floats and the actual frame of the dock and the subfloor over on land, floated that and then built the rest of it up from there. It took about two and a half months to build it and now we were working sun up, sun down every single day. We took very few breaks, so that was definitely an expedited process, but we got it done quickly so that we could get back to work at our day jobs in our busy season over the summer. We were also able to cut costs in a lot of ways by doing a lot of the labor ourselves, finding some really cool steals on Facebook Marketplace and reclaiming some wood, just being thrifty wherever we could, so we think it worked out pretty well. I happen to work here and manage Fontana Marina I work for the National Park Service seasonally as a forestry technician, so I've got about an hour drive to my duty station, not including the boat ride. Our dog's name is Aiko, she's an Akita, she's eight years old, and she's a total, and she's a total boat dog. Oh, you're about <laughs> to say I know, <laughs> <laughs> let me just try that again. Luckily, Akitas are kind of a perfect fit for this lifestyle. Even though they're a big dog, they have pretty low energetic needs. They're very calm. They like to sleep about half the day, if not more. So we get her exercise in the morning and evening, but throughout the day, she's very content to just lay here and sleep. Number one question you get on a floating house, houseboat, is how do you take your dog to the bathroom? Well, nothing much has changed from the last floating house. We take her to the bank, she goes to the bathroom, she gets back in the dinghy, and she comes back to the house. All right, guys, welcome to the outside of the house. We're going to show you a couple of things out here that we've done. One of the first deals, this is actually the floating house square footage here, and then we've added these outside docks. Now we were only allowed to have 400 square feet of docks on this house, so what we've done is build a front dock with two side docks going down both sides of the house. That way we have places for our utilities, easy access to get on and off of a boat. 
We went with these swings that we tie up. We love these, but we spend a lot of time in these chairs staring at that view right there. If y'all come with me, I'll show you the utility side of the house. So we've got lithium iron phosphate batteries on this house, but every now and again, we have to charge with a generator because maybe we won't have sun for two or three days. We'll just plug this right in, charges our battery bank, and we'll be good to go for two or three more days. The way we build these houses, we run our hot water off of gas, liquid propane, LP. We also cook with the gas and we run our refrigeration off gas. So we put a 100 pound bottle on here. This bottle will last us two months and then we'll need to take it to town and fill it back up. These hot water heaters you can get for $100, $200. The main thing with us is our water intake is actually city water on these houseboats. But the piping is ran through the lake and it hangs off of floats. So the water will change temperatures throughout the year with the lake changing temperatures. When we buy these, we have to buy one that has a winter and summer mode because our inlet water will change temperatures and these things don't always work well that way. This house is not anchored with a winch like on our last house that we had. This house has got four anchor points and they're all one inch twisted line. They go up into rocks and we've hammer drilled in the rocks, embedded eye bolts. And this house is designed to move out. As you can tell, this lake is down. It's actually down 40 feet right now. It'll drop another 20 feet down. Um, as it drops down more, we will slide this house probably 100 yards out from where it's at. This back anchor line will be left up here where the land is and our front anchor lines will then become our back anchor lines. And we've designed this house to slide out in the winter and slide back in in the summertime. When the lake's all the way up, this is 70 to 80 feet deep. Now we're probably in about 35 feet of water, I would think. If you look back here with me, you'll see this waterfall. Uh, there, it gets a little bigger in the winter time as the lake goes down, but it runs up the cove of this mountain. And at nighttime, this is what we listen to, this beautiful sound. In the mornings, as of this morning, we have bobcats we see run across the back line of this waterfall. The otters have a, a den up top here. We see them come in and out every day eating their fish. Bears along the banks. We get a lot more wildlife here because I guess we're more secluded in this cove. So it's, uh, it's been a cool place to live. Now we're here on the left side of the house. We decided to go with a snowflake white, and believe it or not, there's like 2,000 white. So when you're picking out the right colors, you ask your mother. And mom did a solid on this. Snowflake white, this black has almost a greenish tint to it. Goes in great with the background. We went with a tongue and groove soffit on this house, and we stained it with a personal stain that we mix up to get this certain color. And it really just ties it in and makes it pop with the nature. And during the summer seasons when we're swimming, gotta have a ladder. Every boat needs a ladder in case you fall in. So put us a nice dock ladder off the back instead of the front of the house. We don't have to worry about pulling in with boats and hitting it. And uh, gives you kind of your own little private swimming hole back here. This bee cove is famous for its trout. So the trout love to come into this natural spring water. I'm thinking it's a lot cooler as the water flows through here. And this is a great fishing hole. At nighttime, you can catch largemouth, trout, catfish. Everything loves to come into this hole. So we stay well fed through this hole. With this house, we wanted to add a little nautical vibe to it, so we went with an octagonal window, put it right in the center up top, and it just gives it that nautical feel because we're out here in the mountains and we also are a floating house, so just didn't want it to be too plain. So window is nice. Cutting trim for octagonal, that's a little tougher than I thought it was going to be, but we did get it done and maybe a little wood filler and a good bit of paint and looks good now. So everybody wants to know how do you stay connected out here? We don't have any phone service in the middle of this national forest. We have a Starlink and Starlink is hooked up, works great for us, no trees. We have a perfect view of the sky and this is the game changer for us living off the grid. 
So we live mainly off sun power and our solar system's on the roof. It's two 270 watt panels and it's plugged into our EcoFlow system. We're running 7200 watt hours on lithium iron phosphate batteries. We have two Delta Pros and that is plenty of power. We can do five loads of laundry during the summer when we have full sunshine and still go to bed with 80 and 90 percent capacity of our batteries. All right, y'all come with me now. We'll check out the inside. All right, welcome to the interior of our floating tiny home. As you can see, I'm here in the kitchen. We've got kind of an open concept design between the kitchen and living room here. So one big improvement that we wanted to incorporate into this kitchen over our last kitchen was having a little bit more counter space. So we were definitely able to accomplish that here and I'm really happy with how this turned out. We also wanted to add a pop of color. Brandon and I are typically very neutral kind of people when it comes to our color design. So this may not be big for some people, but for us, this was huge. Thanks again to Brandon's mom for helping us nail down this color perfectly. But we've got this beautiful teal cabinets and they really make this awesome centerpiece, our copper sink pop. This copper sink is one of our favorite things in this entire house. I had seen some really cool copper sinks on Pinterest and we absolutely lucked out and were able to find this one on Facebook Marketplace with the fixtures for $350. So that was beyond a steal. We were ecstatic about that. We've got a gas stove here, pretty standard, and then our refrigerator runs on either propane or electric. We do typically run it on the propane, but sometimes on a really nice sunny day where we know it's not going to be an overhaul on our solar panels, we'll switch that to electric, which helps us save a little bit of gas. Another lesson that we learned from our previous house was that we really needed to incorporate more food storage into our kitchen. We somehow didn't even think about that in the last house so we wound up just kind of setting all of our dry food on the counter which beyond looking cluttered was just hard to organize and messy so we've got the nice lazy susan here which we absolutely love and plenty of cabinet space so even though we don't have any land per se to work with out here i still do like to try and grow a little bit of our own food here I've got my little micro green garden, so we grow all kinds of different greens and we just sprinkle those on all kinds of foods, use them in smoothies, add them to you know our juices, things like that. I've also got some basil and cilantro that I grow outside. We're thinking about maybe doing a grow tower one day, so we're making it work even though we don't actually have soil of our own to work with. And here next to our micro green garden, you can see we've got a ladder going up to our, what we call our mini loft. So the mini loft is the space above the entryway of the house. We were required to have this 24 square foot egress, this entryway that's kind of recessed into the house, but we didn't want to make that space lost. So we added a little mini loft so we could use the space above that entryway. So come with me and we'll check out the bathroom. So the first thing that you're gonna see as you walk into the bathroom is our super cute little vanity nook. We did DIY counters here. We have a vessel sink and wall mounting faucets. This is our porthole mirror, you know, kind of a throwback to nautical ship windows. So we love that touch. You might notice a lot of different nautical touches throughout this house. And yes, it is a floating house, so it makes sense. But more specifically, these are kind of oceanic nautical touches. And a lot of that is owing to Brandon's sailing background and our dreams for the future of sailing around the world one day. So these, these touches not only are super cute, but they kind of inspire us and in our, our dreams for the future. One of the first things that folks tend to notice when they walk into our bathroom is this rather unique DIY tub that we've got going on. Yes, it is a watering trough. So we got this 100 gallon watering trough from Tractor Supply. We made it a really beautiful satin white and added some fixtures to it so that it could be used as either a tub, a shower, or with the shower handle. One thing that we would have had to think a lot about in the last house with having a tub would have been weight distribution because at eight pounds per gallon, water is pretty heavy. So even though we're not gonna fill 100 gallons in this tub, even with 50 gallons, that's all of a sudden 400 pounds in this corner. Luckily in this house, our floats underneath the house are so much more robust that even 400 pounds is really not that big of a difference to where you could you know, have the house leaning or anything like that. So. 
we feel really excited not to have to nitpick about the weight so much in this house and be able to have luxuries like this. Right next to the tub here, we've got our all-in-one washer-dryer combo unit. The biggest benefit of this is, of course, saving some space and having just a single unit. It is a little bit smaller than a traditional washer would be, so we have smaller loads that we do slightly more frequently. In the summertime, we're able to hang our clothes out to dry, and not only does that save energy, but the sun is actually typically a little bit more efficient at drying our clothes than, than the dryer is. The dryer does tend to be our highest energetic pool, so if there is anything in the house that might cause us to need to use the generator, it's typically the dryer but that's no big deal. So the toilet in this house is a marine macerating toilet, meaning that whenever you flush, it grinds everything up, it goes straight into the holding tank, which then gets pumped out once a week. Obviously, you don't want to put your septic in the lake, so all our black water goes into a tank, and that tank's pumped by the marina. And they come out once a week, pump about 40 to 50 gallons is what we normally use, and take it, and it gets sent off to a treatment plant. So. It's a cost that we have for living on the water, but we think it's well worth it. Brandon actually wrote a grant with the North Carolina Wildlife Federation to help get these pump outs subsidized, which makes it a lot easier and more accessible for everybody to be able to afford and not have any excuse to be dumping into the lake. So it's actually just five bucks a week to get pumped out. It used to be a dollar a gallon. So you can imagine, you know, for instance, we have a 300 gallon holding tank that can be pretty expensive on a weekly basis. So five bucks per pump out is a significant improvement and definitely helps keep our lake clean. All right, let's head on to the bedroom now. All right, so coming into our bedroom here, we've got essentially our bed taking up the majority of the room of course because we're in a tiny house but i'm really excited that in this room we actually have enough space to walk all the way around the bed the last bed was in a room where it was basically birth style with the walls flush up against the bed so this bed is significantly easier to make up as you could imagine one of the first things that people notice in this room is that our bed is suspended by these ropes or is it <laughs> it's actually not suspended by these ropes, but we love the look of a hanging, swinging bed and, and just the nautical vibes of the ropes in general. Picture that having a actual hanging, swinging bed in a floating house that's constantly moving, in particular in a room this small, would be a disaster. So we secretly put a floating bed frame underneath the bed so it gives the appearance of it hanging, but it still has the structure and stability of a bed that's grounded. The only other piece of furniture in this room is going to be our dresser here and that was a really nice addition to this house because in our last house we just had all of our clothes in drawers underneath the bed which served a purpose but here we actually have space to hang up clothes so we're not as wrinkly shirted all the time and we can just organize things a little bit better. So down here at the foot of the bed we have this massive full length window. This is one of my favorite parts not only about this room but about our house. This window beyond having a beautiful view and us being able to hear the wonderful sound at night to fall asleep to the cascade back there, this window is also really important for the thermoregulation factors of this house. So we chose a window that cranks open because it expands the angle that we're able to capture the wind that's flowing. So again, typically we do have that wind that's blowing south to north through here. So it just comes straight in and then picks up through the top windows and filters that cool air through like AC. But occasionally if the wind direction shifts and it's more of a side to side breeze, we can still oftentimes capture that because it'll hit this window and funnel in through the house. So again, that just kind of expands the angle of the wind direction that we're able to capture and use as our natural AC. Both the bedroom and the bathroom have this beautiful tongue and groove ceiling, which also serves, of course, as the floor of our loft. So heading around to the back side of the bedroom wall, we've got our kind of two-in-one staircase up to the loft slash shelves with storage and some decorative items. Brandon built this himself, and I think he did a really good job. Really happy with how that turned out. And of course, it serves a function for us, so let's check it out. Coming up above our bedroom and bathroom here, we've got our loft. 
The loft serves mainly as a guest room and also with a little bit of additional storage. We've got a queen size bed up here which has been really exciting just to have the option to have guests stay over because in our last house all we really had to offer was the couch and sleeping on a couch definitely loses its charm after a certain age so we've been really really excited to have a few guests over. We've only had one guest so far but um, it's nice to have that option. So as you can see in this loft area this is definitely not somewhere that you could fully stand up but since it's really just a guest and kind of extra clothes storage space it's not somewhere that's being accessed by us or anybody else very often. We didn't feel the need to sacrifice the highest point of the ceiling to have a little bit more space in the loft when we'd rather have those high ceilings where we're actually spending our time 99% of the time in the kitchen and living room. So I have to say I'm really proud of this ceiling. The days that we were installing this ceiling, it maybe took two or three days. Those were most definitely the hardest days of our build. We chose to use some materials that would save us money and that definitely made it a lot harder to install them. But in the end, we came out with a beautiful looking ceiling with these faux beams for in total less than $400. We added this fun rope light fixture, again another nautical touch because it is at a higher center of gravity it does sway a little bit whenever the house moves which I love. It just is another reminder that you are indeed on the water. Even though this is primarily a guest space, I personally just love coming up here because it gets a little bit of a different view of the house, which can be kind of important in a tiny house. It makes it feel bigger just to have different perspectives on occasion. Looking out over the windows, you see the water in the lower windows and it's just so beautiful. And then when you look up in the higher windows, there's just this picturesque view of a mountain. It almost looks like a painting. So spending time up in the loft is always fun. One of my favorite aspects of this lifestyle is just the tranquility, the peacefulness out here. It's just our cup of tea all day long. We absolutely love having the peace and quiet. We love having so much easy access to nature around us. You're really in that, you're really part of that nature and, and in sync with it, especially being off grid here. It feels like we really ebb and flow with those cycles and, and that's something that I feel like has improved our quality of life drastically. I think we will be here for the foreseeable future. We do have some big plans, kind of early retirement plans eventually to go spend a couple decades sailing around the world, epic adventure, but we're certainly enjoying our time here in Fontana in the meantime and, and for the foreseeable future. Tiny house now, John Journey, they come to fill my soul. Come on out and show them how I'm gonna roll. We live tiny, Lord, now we live it in a good old way. Love that tiny journey, and we're journeying along our way. And I live in a tiny home, Lord, and I live it every day. And I love this tiny life, Lord, now look at it by the way. Killed it. That was excellent. Yes. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Now you got a tiny house. <laughs>